Hi, you're welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth. This is a place that you get the undiluted word of God, and this is a place that we get to build your spiritual life, your prayer life. You get to understand the word of God more and even deeper. So I encourage you, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, like this message you're about to listen to, and share with others. So without wasting much of our time, let's get into the message of today. God bless you. Can God give you 10 Naira today and say, so that 10 Naira back? And you say, your majesty, it may be painful, but it belongs to you. And God will say, it was only a test. I don't need your money. You have qualified for the next level. Now 50 Naira can come. And you say, Lord, even if it is 100 Naira that comes, it still belongs to you. There is a part of this wealth thing that is not about business. It's not about buying and selling. It's a covenant transaction. Please listen to me. I know what I'm saying. There is a part of this finance thing that is mysteriously spiritual. It has nothing to do with buying and selling. I'm not a dummy. I understand the economic system of the world. You believe me on that with all humility. But there is a side to this thing, Ba, that is not selling a car for profit or building a mall <clears throat> that one that business is done in the spirit is the same thing that happens between the kings of this world and satan too they can start by transacting but there are certain levels of wealth believe me it's not buying and selling that brings you there no it's spirit transactions that ends with a covenant we are going to open you to this world. We are going to open you to the wealth of the cosmos. What are we going to get in return? And you say in return, I will fund the program of Satan. Stamp it, stamp it with blood and doors open. Satan took Jesus into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and said, all this I will give to you. He didn't say if you buy a container of palm oil, red oil, and sell it across to Ghana or to another nation. He said, if you will bow to me. If Jesus quietly bowed to Satan, you will not know. You will just see that dominion has returned to him. Do you know there are many other people who have been called like that to those chambers in the spirit? You want to become famous? You want to become this and this spirit? You say, the condition is bow to me, sell your soul. And they say, what nonsense is my soul? And they make the mistake of Esau. What is, what is my soul? What is my relationship with Jesus? No, I need money. That's all I want. What do I need to do? Kill your child with speed. Kill your wife with speed. Kill your husband. Who else should I kill? Because this thing, I must get it. You would think I'm joking. I would not stand on this stage and be talking to the globe and joke, and I'm joking. It's true. The same way, when God wants to trust you with wealth, genuine wealth, true riches, I tell you it's beyond business. It may flow through the channel of business, but God is going to call you to the chambers of the spirit. He will tell you, I have a program and I'm looking for a treasurer. And your own, listen, yours is going, to, your own will say, Lord, I want you to walk upon my heart so that you can trust me. That with the wealth of the kingdom as it comes, it will be beyond pride, building an empire. No, this is beyond just having houses and making a name and becoming CEO of XYZ. And God will say, can I trust you that souls will be won? Can I trust you that homes will be mended? Can I trust you that children will eat? Can I trust you that you will lift up my name? And with the frailty of your heart, this is what we call covenant wealth. Covenant wealth is not wealth that happens by you just tithing and giving. No, the covenant there is to understand the purpose that you are bound that I will never forget why. The why is what makes it covenant, not the practice within it. Understanding the purpose is what makes it covenant. So God can tell you, I want to trust you with the wealth of nations. That I will make you as an individual to become like a nation. And you say, Lord, what is the condition? 
the condition is that your heart will remain mine loving me the condition is that every time I make a demand you will say yes sir the condition is that while the world looks at you in admiration you will point them back to me and you will say yes Lord yes to your will Lord yes to your ways oh yes Lord we will obey yes to your will Lord yes to your way And once you are done with that business in the spirit, now you can come out, you can buy and sell, you can do whatever you do, and a mysterious force that will be clear before men that this one bar is not just transaction, there is an invisible force. That force is God's part of the covenant, insisting that you rise, does not matter what the economy is. Let me tell you the truth. Believers, please hear me. I'm not here to play with your intelligence. Before I show you the other thing I want to show you, when God says it is a season of abundance, the agriculturist is not the one who makes the earth to produce. The agriculturist only masters planting. Once he drops that seed and covers it, the remaining air, there are parts he cannot explain. There is a hand within the earth. It is God's covenant with the earth that partners with that business of agriculture that as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So when you come to the farm and say, I have a bumper harvest, 30 trucks of rice, 30 trucks of maize. Uh -uh. It was not all about buying and selling. You partnered with the spirit realm. There are many of us here that need to step into a level of abundance for the sake of the kingdom. But what God is doing right now is a circumcision. Because if God should prosper you now the way you want, sincerely, it will be a risk to your own spiritual life. There are men who when they prosper, their marriages will go down. Because in the presence of that abundance, no. Their wives will become slaves. There are women, if they prosper the way they are, with that uncircumcised heart, their husbands will become their children. There are children, if they prosper, are we together now? Without that circumcision of the heart, many things will go wrong. Place your hand on your chest and pray in one minute. God, you can trust me. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon greed. Walk upon selfishness. Pray. Walk upon carnality. The desire to tell lies because of money. The desire to bribe. The desire to kill. The desire to be corrupt. Oh, it doesn't matter, you say. It does. If it is God's way, it does. Lay your hand on your chest and those praying. Cry unto God. I want to step into a season of abundance. Walk upon my heart. I confess my greed. I confess carnality. I confess materialism. I confess a desire to outshine that my, my reason for wanting abundance is because I want to show I have arrived. It says, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Someone pray, pray. Pray, pray. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord, set my life in order for you, for you. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways Oh Lord Set my heart on fire for you Are you praying? Hallelujah.
we like this word millionaire we love it we are obsessed about it we like that word billionaire when they say you are a billionaire people clap and smile they look at you with admiration but it has destroyed many billionaire they say millionaire they say when you hear the word there are those who when they hear this word it's like some dopamine it drives them crazy please ask the lord to purge your heart any money that will take away my relationship with you anything that will cause me to be worse than i am spiritually may it never come around my dwelling never come around my dwelling is someone praying someone who loves god more than money loves god more than business never come around my dwelling the kind of money that you will not have peace in your heart the kind of money that you will know that someone died for you to have it someone was defrauded for you to have it you told a lie you cheated someone to have it the fruits of corruption and dishonesty and falsehood hallelujah the first assignment in this season of abundance is for God to find a people he can trust not a people he loves he already loves you but can he trust you years ago the Lord spoke to me and he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you nothing absolutely nothing believe me this is one of the cardinal secrets of laying gold as dust Many of you are business people and the thing is not working. You are not lazy. You are productive. But God loves you more than your business. He loves you. He does not want your heart to falter. He does not want you to degenerate spiritually. He would rather suspend the manifestation of that prosperity until you hear this sermon. There are many of you, it's not the devil stopping your promotion. I tell you, it's not Satan. You have been weighed. You were already quarter to going out of the things of God. By the time they now promote you to become an MD, God will not even see you again. Church will not see you again. You will not listen to anybody again. Nobody can tell you come again. You say me? That was my former self. You are talking to the one who was broke. That jeep parked outside belongs to me. That estate there belongs to me. And God says nonsense. You are a tenant. The earth belongs to the Lord. Do you know what made someone in the Bible to be called a rich fool? It was not the rich. The fool was that he did not understand the purpose. Why did God give you dominion over his resources? Why did God make you a captain over his inheritance? I live perpetually in this consciousness. That everything God ever places in these hands it truly belongs to him and I'm not just saying this because I'm a preacher fight greed now before it tears you into pieces fight selfishness now before it turns you to become someone who is not a believer God wants your heart beyond your offering beyond your tight beyond your profit what he's looking for right now. I hope I'm not wasting your time. God gave us a word that is a season of abundance now. The first key is not just to show you some dynamics. You are operating in a system that is not the world system. Can God tell you now to empty your account and you say yes sir. I'm not asking you to do it. But can you do it? If you cannot do it, go back for a retreat. But... If an opportunity to buy a nice house comes, can you empty your account for it? Yes, that means that house is your God. Whatever you cannot do for God and you can do for something else, even if it's yourself, anything you can give all for is your God. You don't like what you are hearing? Listen to it all. What then is the pride? This is my business. 
this is my ministry I am this and that no believers don't talk like that because they understand the transactions that happen in the spirit don't get me wrong there are benefits that come there is glory in riches there is glory in wealth but let me tell you the truth the believer who understands why God releases resources will know that number one God releases resources for your comfort number two the advancement of his program do you know sometimes I become very ashamed and even embarrassed that believers have to be cajoled to give it's become a very dirty subject of debate unfortunately even within the church space it was supposed to be an orientation that responsible believers have that you never have to coerce and manipulate because that should even be the bedrock of your understanding before you're rising financially that I am your treasurer Lord as you trust me you can be sure that a portion of your faithfulness over my life will be reflected in the advancement of your program I for one I cannot imagine any notable kingdom activity happening around me and my resources will not be part of it and it's not because of what God has done today no it's been an orientation that God is doing something like this no my one naira must be represented there if it is too small you can use it to buy a bottle of water you can buy a recharge card and make a call for that program to happen for instance but there are many believers this this is how we are God drop my own portion and we collect it another one it's not enough please add more in Jesus name you said whatever we ask in Jesus name more again I'm not satisfied you just keep adding when I'm and God says what do you take me as but there are others who would not even be asking they will just cry before him and say father if ever you are looking for someone to advance your program I may not be able to preach but if you can trust me with resources I will take care of my children take care of everyone and see to it that as far as it depends on me that your program goes forward and God says this is the kind of person I'm looking for I'm going to show you how these blessings come but it's for you to know now that the major hindrance is not that your business is not working let me tell you the truth because there are many of us you've been praying what is the missing link why is it that this door of finances does not open let me tell you the average person in our world today is knowledgeable enough about value and our world has become so networked that any value you have should at least bring you something if your hand is still empty it's not the problem is not with your transactional ability is that there is business in the spirit you have not done I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift to me. Whoever you want to help, Lord, you can help through me. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forever. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to 
like go on the errands. But the younger one says he's not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around.